Hey guys, so in the last video, we went through some digital signal processing techniques that we typically use to help prepare our audio data for classification. So in this video, we'll be going over uh, where to get the data uh, that we'll be using, and we'll start doing some basic visualizations on that data. Um, so there's two links that I kind of want to talk about. Uh, the first one is the link to a Kaggle competition. Uh, this competition was for uh, the free sound general purpose audio tagging. Um, and this is a, a much bigger data set than what we'll be working with. Um, it's about 42 classes of audio and several gigabytes. So uh, the purpose of these videos is actually to try to focus on the implementation and then the model building. And so uh, the bigger our data is, the more it kind of gets in the way of that process. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken um, 10 different classes and they originally came from this Kaggle competition and I've only taken musical instruments. So we'll have 10 different musical instruments we'll try to classify. And for each musical instrument, we'll have uh, 30 audio files to go along with it, okay? So if you wanna get the, the data that we'll be using, it's in this GitHub repository. I just called it audio classification, but um, go ahead and download that to wherever you wanna put it. I'll just open mine up. I put mine on the desktop. And so what you'll have is a folder with all the WAV files. So this should have 300 audio files and they've got these really weird names next to them. So what we'll also be using is the CSV file. So the CSV file is actually just, um, it pairs these weird obscure names with the actual classes of our musical instrument, okay? Uh, and if you want the slides from the last video, I've also put them in here. Uh, but make sure that you download this and um, we'll start working in the, the EDA file in Python. All right, so once you've downloaded that data, go ahead and open up uh, EDA.py in whatever text editor you want to use. So uh, there's a couple of imports at the top here that you might not have, and I'll, so I'll briefly mention those. Uh, the first one is TQDM. So uh, TQDM is basically a library that lets you wrap any iterable in Python and it will create a progress bar for you so you can, uh, for example, you can watch a for loop as it executes and you'll know when it'll be done. Uh, so it's definitely a helpful one. I would recommend that you download it, but it's kind of optional. Uh, the next one is Python speech features. So this is the, um, the audio library that was developed by James Lyons from Practical Cryptography. So if you took a look at those references that I put in the slide from last time, uh, this is his actual library that he's written in Python to do some of the DSP that we're gonna be doing. Um, so super easy to install, just do uh, pip install Python speech features. And if you wanna take a look at any of the functions we're gonna be using, go to Python speech features base.py. And most of them are in here. And uh, you can read through these if you want. So uh, the last one is Labrosa. Labrosa is like the common default um, audio library that you usually hear about when you start to work with like audio in Python. So we're gonna use that a little bit just to read in data. So make sure you have that installed. All right, um, and there's also, there's four functions in here. They all look really similar because uh, they're all used to create subplots of the stuff that I want to plot in this section, uh, but they're they're all super similar. And so to avoid me just like writing the same function a whole bunch of times and boring people, I have already thrown them in here. Uh, but with that being said, let's just get started with reading in our audio data. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we can read in our CSV file. So we'll do a, a data frame equals pandas read csv and our csv is called instruments.csv and actually let's just see if that gets loaded so this is what should you should have going on um, the csv has the file name and then has the corresponding label of those musical instruments um, so uh, the first thing that i'm thinking of when uh, I take a look at this data is I want to know like what is the distribution of each of the individual musical instruments with their classes so what's the class distribution 
of this data. Uh, and that's because even though I've selected 30 files for each class, uh, all those files have different lengths of audio. So um, what happens is we're probably going to have uh, some issue with class balance, but the only way we're going to know is if we create a plot. So let's just start by creating a pie plot. Um, so to get started with that, let's do a data frame dot set index. And what we're going to do to make the iteration a little bit easier is we can set our file name column and we're going to set it to the index and we'll do this in place. So in place just means like if you if you had in place false, you'd have to do this. But instead, we just modify our data frame in place. So now we can do a 4f in data frame dot index. So now our index holds the file name column. And we can read in uh, that individual file. So we'll say rate signal is equal to uh, wave file dot read. And uh, if you remember, our files are stored in the wave files directory. So we'll just do wave files plus f. And uh, in order to do positional base indexing in in pandas, we're going to do something called data frame dot at. So this will allow us to access individual elements. So we'll say the data frame at our index of f. We want to create a, a new value called length, or rather a new column called length. And that will just equal to our signal that we just read in. Uh, we'll take the shape zero, so the length of that signal, and we'll divide by its sampling rate. So what it'll give us is um, the, the length of that signal in seconds. So now, actually, let's go ahead and run that so you guys can see it. Now, okay, so our file name is moved to the index, and we've created this new column called length, and we have the corresponding length in seconds of each of these individual files, okay? Um, so now, let's do, uh, let's just create classes, so what we're doing is we're just creating a set of based on uh, our whole all the 300 labels that we have so we can take these 300 labels and do a numpy dot unique on them so data frame dot label and uh, we can also create something called a class distribution now this is kind of tricky and I think it's actually the hardest thing in all this stuff is figuring out how to do this uh, we'll create something called class dist, and pandas has a, a method called data frame dot group by. So we'll do a data frame dot group by, and we're going to be grouping by label. So what does this mean? Um, we've got like what ten different labels. We're going to group all of them together, and then of these groups that we've created, I'm going to say, well, I want access to just the length of all these values that have been grouped by label. And then I want to take the mean of all of those lengths. And what this will give us is a class distribution, which is a series in uh, pandas. And now we'll have a, a series where the index is our class labels. And we'll have the corresponding. So they were grouped by label, which you see here, an index. And then their length is what we actually computed. And we took the mean of all those values that were grouped by label. So we're left with like the mean. This is the actual class distribution of all of our musical instruments. So now all we have to do is plot it. And so the best way to plot that is with like a pie chart. So let's get started with that. So figure and axes is equal to plt dot um, sub subplots. And I will set our axis. We'll do ax.set title. Uh, we'll call it class distribution. And then we'll say y is equal to uh, 1.08. So this is kind of optional, but um, when you're creating subplots, you can actually move the title up. Like if you want to move your title up a little bit, uh, you can just say like y equals uh, 1.08, and it'll just bump it up a little bit. Um, so 
Now we'll do an ax.py of class distribution. So the information that we want to put in our pie chart is class distribution. And we also have to give it the labels. So the labels will be equal to um, class dot index. And so this next part is really weird, but it's just called auto PCT. And uh, auto PCT is, it's just going to set the floating point assignment for all of our in individual values in the plot. So I want like one decimal point of accuracy. So I'm going to do ampersand 1.1 1 .1, uh, F for floating and then two more ampersand. Uh, and this next one is shadow. We're going to set the shadow to false because it looks bad. And then we want to start this plot at, we're just going to start it right at the top and 90 degrees. Um, and the final thing that you should do is we're going to do an ax.axis and we're going to set it to equal. Uh, the reason we do this is because uh, if you were to just plot it now, the, the pie chart would look like an ellipse. So by doing this equal, it'll actually make it look like a circle. And we'll do uh, plt.show. Uh, and then the last part here is we'll do a, a data frame dot reset index. So if we want to move that file name back into its own column, uh, now that we're kind of done with it, we're just going to do move it back with data frame dot reset index in place equals true. And let's take a look at what that plot actually looks like. So this is what you should be getting. Um, I'm using Spider, which has like this IPython console, so it kind of lets you dump out a lot of matplotlib figures uh, within this console, but this is what you should be getting. Um, and interesting, so we do have a lot of class imbalance going on. Uh, you'll notice that like base drum is probably our, our lowest volume of data that we have, and then we have lots of acoustic guitar data, lots of flute data. Um, and really, this is going to come into play when we hit the modeling stage. Um, there, are, there are ways to handle class imbalance because in the real world, it's not always feasible to just say, oh, well, I'll just go collect more data. Um, sometimes you're just given your data and that's what you got. You got to make it work. So in order to just like, I mean, to, to achieve class balance, you'd have to you have to start dropping out a lot of data just to meet up with like this, this really small percentage of bass drum data. Um, you don't necessarily want to be throwing data out, so, uh, but we'll be getting into that later in the modeling section. Uh, so at this point, we can start to kind of make some visualizations of our, our time series, our FFT. So the way this is going to work is I'll do uh, 4C in classes. So I don't want to look at, like, there's 30 files for each class. I don't want to look at all 30 of them. I only want to look at one of them. So. I'm going to go through for our first class and say uh, wave file is equal to data frame. Uh, and now this part is a little tricky, but I'm going to say, well, I want a data frame and I want it based on the condition where this data frame dot label is equal to our class that we're looking at. Uh, so what that's going to return is the data frame, or rather a data frame with 30 values in it. So uh, with those 30 values, I guess I'll just show you. So you can do something called like a positional base indexer. That's what illoc is. Um, an illoc, if you say like, okay, I want whatever's in this data frame at the zeroth index and the zeroth column. Okay, so that would mean that um, we would have like 30 values in this data frame. We'd access the zero index and we access the zero column, so file name. So that will give us just one sample for um, saxophone here. And then correspondingly, it would give you one sample for violin or fiddle. Okay. So that's how you kind of make that comparison. Uh, so now we can read in our files. So we'll do signal rate equals labrosa.load. And we're going to load in wave files. If you remember now, we actually have a uh, wave file is going to be the name of the file we run our read in. And then Labrosa also asks you for sampling rate. Uh, and if you remember, our sampling rate was 44,100. Uh, another way to figure this out is you can probably just use 
uh, a different, or the way I figured it out was I, <laughs> I read in using uh, this right here, wave file from scipy.io, and this will actually spit out the the sampling rate. Like it'll detect it for you. You don't actually have to uh, put it in like you have to do with Librosa. So that's how I found out they were sampled at that rate. And so um, actually I'm gonna go ahead and stop here because it's a good place to stop. Um, I don't want the video to get too long, but in the next video we'll be actually plotting our all of our all the stuff that we talk about up here. So plot signals, plot FFT, filter bank, and MCCs. Um, we'll be plotting all those in the next video, uh, but this is a good stopping point. So I'll see you there.